coal, a leading source of carbon emissions. Professor Graham Morrison's research has brought him to one of Australia's most important areas for coal-fired power stations. Liddell Power Station is located in the upper Hunter Valley, which is about 200 kilometres north of Sydney, an area of major coal mining and a substantial collection of power stations. Built in 1970 with 2,000 megawatts capacity, Liddell is the third largest power station in New South Wales. It burns coal to produce steam, driving turbines and generators to create electricity for 1.3 million homes. Whilst coal currently provides the fuel for 85% of Australia's electricity, this station may play a unique role in a big change. By connecting solar heat, to help produce steam for the coal-fired power station. This solar thermal technology was pioneered by Dr David Mills and Professor Graham Morrison in Australia. It is seen as a genuine alternative to coal and nuclear power. It's taken about 15 years to get to this stage. About 10 years of development, design, raising money, trial projects that didn't work, and finally a full-scale project that's about to be put live onto the power station. It's uh, taken a long time, but there's a real turnaround of interest in this type of technology now. The scientists always intended to create standalone solar power stations, but having access to Liddell meant they could test their system within the facilities of an existing power station. Being able to prove the concept has created worldwide interest in their technology, and they are now building standalone solar power stations in the United States. It's certainly world first in terms of direct connection to a power station. It's the first large scale demonstration of direct boiling technology. That is, we produce steam directly in this solar collector. We produce steam at 275 degrees C, 50 bar, and that's the type of steam, temperature and power needed to operate turbines. The technology works by capturing solar energy with reflective mirrors. The tracking of the mirrors is controlled by a computer program that knows where the sun is at any moment in the sky, where the receiver is, and positions the mirror to be midway between the line from the sun and the line to the receiver. So there's a computer program that is positioning the mirrors throughout the day to keep the focal point onto the receiver. The mirrors reflect solar energy onto the receivers positioned overhead. The receiver is made up of pipes filled with pressurised water. These tubes are feeding very high pressure water into the receiver, 50 atmospheres, 50 bar pressure. The water, when it reaches the receiver, uh, absorbs solar radiation and is converted to steam. By the time it gets 300 metres down the other end of the array, it's steam that can be fed directly to the power station. Our technology is effectively just changing the boiler in such a system. Instead of using a nuclear boiler, we use a solar boiler. The solar boiler is very different in shape. It's maybe a square mile or two square miles or ten square miles in size, but it's still just a boiler. And uh, when you do that, you, you find that all of the other technology to make these things work is already there. It's all, the, all of the power station systems, uh, people understand it in the utilities. In order to roll it out quickly and cheaply, they designed it to function at relatively low temperatures. This allows them to use readily available and low-cost materials, glass, steel and mirrors that can last 30 years or more. We found that there are a whole range of materials issues, doesn't matter whether you're using pumps or whether you're using various types of materials throughout your system. Problem after problem became simpler operating at that lower temperature. Graham has arrived on site to meet his team. They're about to test the steam connection from the array into the power station. Hi Greg. Good morning Graham. I see we're under full operation up there. Yes, it's going to be a lovely day today. Excellent, that's great. With the deadline looming to get the first power station built in America, these tests will provide crucial data for the design of the US operation. Hi Andrew, how are we going? What pressure are we running at? Uh, we're up to 45 bar. 45 bar, great, excellent. At the moment we're monitoring the high pressure operation of the array. We're running at uh, 250 degrees C uh, at the moment, uh, and we're just checking the stability of the operation under this uh, high temperature mode. 
and it's essential that we have stable control of the system before the power station will allow us to open up into their system. Okay, so we're set to start up now. We've got all the pumps running. Um, we bring it onto the line now and get the power into the receiver. So we're losing is that out of the track now or uh, yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah. Might get red on to reset that. It is essential they get this right. Converting highly pressurised water to steam as it travels down the 300 metre length of mirrors requires precise control. Under high pressure operation, there are some uh, control problems. The uh, system can reach extreme temperatures very quickly. So what we're doing at the moment is experimenting with various control methods to manage those high temperatures. The water must be heated evenly to steam, so there are no pockets of liquid shooting down the pipes. Yeah, the image looks great now. The uh, uh, images are really tightened up on the receiver. Focus looks really good. And the mirrors must be focused precisely on the receiver for accurate heat control. Yeah. 257. OK, spot on. Right. And not much variation across the array at all. The development of Mills and Morrison's solar thermal technology quickly attracted international attention. Silicon Valley investors were so impressed, they invited David Mills to begin a large-scale rollout of power plants in the United States. There are far more solar turbines on order throughout the world than there are nuclear turbines. Uh, it's just happened all of a sudden. And, uh, and uh, uh, we also see uh, timelines of uh, install plant installation, which are between two and four years from the shaking of the hands. And, and nuclear is lucky to have seven or, seven or eight years. One of the major advantages of the solar thermal technology uh, is not only the low pollution uh, aspect of the system, but the fact that it will operate for 30 years with no fuel cost. So it's a very different uh, technology that has arisen. It's a very scary one for the ones that are already there because it goes fast, it produces no pollution, uh, and can carry the whole load. Their company, Osra, is now building their first 177 megawatt solar power plant in the United States for one of America's largest power suppliers. Located east of San Francisco, the plant will deliver power to 120,000 homes. We've decided that we will build uh, five lines. Each line is like the line you've already seen at Liddell. Build them in California at a place called Kimberlina, and these will be version two. Their new robotics factory in Nevada is set up to manufacture large quantities of the solar mirrors by automation. It could annually produce more than 700 megawatts of solar collectors, enough to power nearly half a million homes and keep 1,400 people employed. The aim is to be able to produce large-scale solar power stations quickly anywhere around the world. The market for solar thermal electricity around the world is just enormous. We are concentrating on the Californian area and in the very near future we'll see in Australia. Uh, the next big area is likely to be North Africa supplying power into uh, Europe. There's already uh, electrical cables across the Mediterranean where that can be fed into. Could solar replace coal as the main energy source for power stations? Morrison believes it can that this technology is part of a new energy and economic revolution. Not only are we producing a sustainable electricity supply system, we're generating a totally new industry which will displace the coal industry and coal-fired power stations, but in doing that it'll produce more employment and more wealth for the country than we currently get from coal exports. <laughs>